welcome back to a brand new video. If you're new here, my name is Jasmine, and if you love watching videos on luxury shopping and designer hauls, then I think you're going to really like it here. So please consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be doing a video on Dior and we have all experienced a price increase uh, globally with Dior. This is not something that's new. Um, other luxury houses have been doing this. Uh, Chanel came out with a whopping increase in May, um, which was more than what they've ever done in May. They usually do have price increases every year, as we all know. It was pretty large. It was you know, close to 20% on a lot of their classic bags. When uh, that increase came out, there were rumors looming that Dior is going to do the same thing. Uh, Louis Vuitton did it, and as of July 2nd, Dior did do a price increase. So after I was in to browse um, prior to that, the sales associate I was dealing with did let me know that yes, there is an imminent price increase um, on a lot of their classic bags, which include the Lady Dior, um, their saddle bag, as well as um, they did implement it on their uh, book tote and as well as the 30 montane i believe price increases can be very discouraging to many people um, especially if you had a particular item on your mind and it was on your wish list and then now with that price increase it's just it's just taking you a few steps back and now you have to save up longer for that particular item and it it really does suck um, as somebody who has purchased a bag that has undergone a price increase, part of me is happy that I did purchase it before and part of me makes me feel like, oh, okay, well, my bag has gone up in value um, and more on bags going up in value in a future video and I'll go on about that and maybe think, make you think otherwise, but stay tuned for that. But it makes you feel good that you got it at a better deal, really, but in a way it kind of sucks because the price has gone up, but the quality hasn't. So you're just like, well, if I did want to get another bag like this, I don't feel motivated to do so because I got it cheaper before. You know, truth be told, these price increases are done for certain reasons. Um, one, yes, they have to maintain the prestige of the brand. These are luxury items. They are positional goods and they can't have them attainable for everybody. And that really sucks because I think everybody deserves at least some feeling of luxury in their lives but anyway uh but they also do it to harmonize prices around the world as we know currencies do fluctuate so especially after this pandemic that we did um, encounter and we're still going through currencies have been impacted the canadian dollar really sank it really tanked against other currencies so we got hit harder with the larger price increase um, also look at supply chain, um, access to raw materials, etc., labor, shipping costs, all that. Um, they're all part of it, so they did have to factor this in. So it, it really does suck. It really does suck. But, um, you know, price increases have been happening for the last, like for many years, even before I even got into buying some of these luxury items. Uh, some of the luxury items that I own, um, some people were able to purchase them, um, cheaper than what I purchased them at. So think of what they're feeling right now. I posted a video in one of the Facebook addicted groups. I was looking at a pair of very overpriced sunglasses uh, from Chanel. Um, still thinking about those. Um, and I was wearing uh, my Lady Dior. And I've been actually wearing this um, throughout uh, the past like two, two and a half weeks. I haven't changed out of it. It is a bag that I love dearly. It's my only Lady Dior and it's my first Lady Dior purchase and a lot of thought went into buying this bag and I thought that I'd share what the bag is like, what I usually keep inside and what I think overall. I think that would give you uh, quite a bit of information to make an informed decision. Um, so I was wearing this bag in that video and then a few of the members did message me about this bag and um, luckily uh, two of you were able to locate this color. Um, one of you are from Toronto and I was just in the Dior boutique and I knew that they had this color so she had told me that her sales associate said that well we don't have it anymore and I said well clearly they don't know because I was at the flagship and they had one of those there so call them and they'll get it to you and she was able to get one before the price increase so I'm very very happy for her and now we're bag twins so <laughs> but anyway um, 
let's just get straight into what I keep in this. So this is the Lady Dior. Um, it's called the My ABC Lady Dior, and it's the, the size small, and the color is Fard. So it sounds like fart, but it's Fard. And um, it is in the lambskin leather. The tulle's not included, but it comes with the... Um, little charms that you can put on the side that you can customize you can add uh, i think as many as you like you just have to pay extra it, it is three charms are included uh letters or symbols they're included and then if you want to add more you have to pay extra for those okay so i'm going to open it up so when you open it up i thought that's really cute some people do mention when you open up the handles um it spells cd it is a top handle bag Okay, and it has a shoulder strap that is detachable and the shoulder strap is quite wide and it's quite soft and comfortable. So let's open this up. It has a flap closure so you can easily open it up and get loads of access into the bag. It's not like the previous uh, Lady Dior's with the zipper and that was one of the things that deterred me from buying this bag to begin with. So on the top, I have my sunglasses. I just kept them in. These are from Chanel. Uh, they've got the little pearl on the side. These are, they usually do this every season and I think they look great. They're polarized, so they're amazing. So those are the sunglasses that I keep just on the top. They're very handy. Um, next, I have a Ziploc bag uh, with uh, two face masks um, because nowadays uh, we do need to carry there we go. We need to carry face masks, face masks with us because uh, depending on where you're going, you do have to wear one. And now um, in various cities, I know in Toronto, as of I believe in a couple of days time, um, it is going to be mandatory to wear these in all indoor spaces. So that's there. Um, <laughs> I have my... <laughs> I have a CD of my x-rays. I got um, spinal x-rays. I was getting uh, treated by my chiropractor and I was complaining of some knee pain and I knew there was something going on in my pelvis. So we got an x-ray to just take a look. And um, yeah, so I have those with me. Um, I did take a look at them, but I just have those with me. I'm gonna probably put them away and store them. Um, oh, I've got lab requisition. I was just at my doctor getting some blood work done. I have gum. Nobody wants um, stinky breath so I have gum. Uh, oh I've got my key holder. Uh, I've seen this in a previous video. This is actually a four ring key holder. I always call it a six ring key holder but this version has four um, four things for the four hooks for the keys. So I've got my keys in there and then there's a larger ring for your key fob. I don't usually put it on there. And then on the back I have like a ID card or um, before I used to keep like a security access card to like get into um, work. So I would just like buzz at the top. So that's a key holder. This is gonna be a nice excuse for me to clean out my bag. <laughs> Um, this again, you've also seen in a previous video. This is the Hermes um, Bastia coin purse. I've had this for a number of years. It's in all of my bags. It's really candy because you can just really count out all your change. Um, even like subway tokens, like if you're commuting. Um, although we don't use tokens anymore. Now we have like a tap card for everything. I think we still have subway tokens. I think we do, but anyway, um, those those things are tiny. They're like smaller than a dime. So if you had them in your chain, it's hard to find them. So now it's like when I did have this, it was convenient because I can just pick the the subway token. Okay. Um, oh, I have <laughs> I have a pair of like nylons. Um, these are for when I was trying on shoes. I don't know why that's in there. <laughs> um, I got receipts. Oh, these are from when I uh, returned uh, items at Zara. So I got receipts. So I always hold on to receipts to make sure that the return has gone through and then I throw it out. Um, another receipt. I've got some cash. And the cash is just floating in there. I don't really know um, because I don't carry a huge wallet in this, so I'm thinking of getting like a flat pouch 
to put something simple like nothing designer just to put cash in because you do need cash these days okay um sometimes you know you, you don't places they don't accept debit or anything like that i have a key fob this is actually for my mom's car i have an extra one um powder compact i have my card holder this is from goyard this is just a flat card holder i've also had this for a number of years and this is just something that goes in all my bags it has my bank card, my health card, it has my Visa card, it has my Costco card. I always have to keep my Costco card um, because you never know when I have to do a Costco run. <laughs> um, I have a mini lipstick from MAC. This is in the color Mare. Um, it's actually stubby now, like it's not, well, I don't know, maybe you can tell. It's like a very like nude, pinky nude color. It's really nice, it's matte. Um, yeah, so there's that. I have a MAC lip liner, also quite stubby and old. This is in the color Sore. And, oh, I have like these, um, <laughs> I still have this on my list. You know when you get like Visa gift cards and then you have like a little balance left over? Um, so I need to transfer these to like my, either I need to get them on one thing or I need to like, Put them on my Tim Hortons app or my Starbucks app so at least I can use like $5.82 and $0.49 and they're not going to waste. Okay, I think that's everything and then there's a zip compartment. I don't think I have anything in there. So that's it empty. Okay, and then the lining is fabric. It's uh, like black and it's in that canage type of print. And then here you have a zipper compartment which you can put like a card holder or cash in. Um, and the inside sticker, I don't think you can really see it, but anyway, it says uh, Christian Dior. <laughs> the inside label says uh, Christian Dior. And then the serial number of the bag is written on the um, inside label uh, somewhere, actually. I don't think it's on the actual label itself. Oh, so inside the zipper pocket, it's really tight. I don't think I've actually ever visualized it, but I'd have to really get in there. But inside the zipper compartment, you have a leather tab, and on there you have the serial code of the bag. It's not on the authenticity card. The authenticity card just says that the bag is authentic, but and what boutique you purchased it from, but the inside um, tab has a serial number on it. Okay, so... Now that the bag is empty, um, we can take a further look at this bag. Okay, so now we're very close. <laughs> so anyway, um, the bag has a quilted pattern all over. This is the canage pattern. And if you um, talk to any like Dior expert, they're gonna say that this matches the pattern on a lot of the chairs that um, were at the fashion shows. Um, back when Christian Dior was around and he was inspired by that pattern to um, quilt the bags in. Um, so you've got uh, all these little grommets on the handles, you've got like oval shaped grommets to hold the handle against this oval shaped grommet, it's got champagne gold hardware, you have charms that spell out Dior so if I You've got like a D there, I, and then a large O, and then an R. And then you also have this leather tab um, on the back. It says uh, Christian Dior right there. Okay. And um, these do, uh, when you get them, they're individually wrapped in like a cling film so that they don't scratch each other. But there is going to be scratching on the hardware. So because they're constantly banging into each other, so I don't know if you can tell, but there is like scuffing on the hardware. So that is inevitable. You can't avoid that. And it's something that you have to accept. It's something I had to accept. I'm very OCD when it comes to my handbags. I really like to keep them as pristine as possible. But this is something that I just can't control. It, it's going to, you know, hit each other when you're carrying it it's gonna jingle around and um, yeah you're gonna you're gonna get that so I don't know why it's not this is how it really like should be 
so it's like that so as you can see the letters are gonna swing back and forth over top and they're gonna get scratched that's just how it is okay um, so far on the leather I haven't experienced any sort of um, scuffing or anything like that and and that's also because I am very careful like I'm I don't really throw this bag around but um, wearing it and such, like I don't, I'm not so scared. Like lamb, lambskin is delicate, but I'm not as scared anymore about scratching it or anything like that. But um, you know, it is it is gonna wear. I, I'm I'm not gonna lie, it is gonna wear. Uh, you do have to be careful. I can't comment on color transfer for this bag because I mainly wear this color um, in the spring, summer, maybe early fall seasons when I'm not wearing a lot of black or dark colors so that's when I really wear this bag and um, I haven't experienced any color transfer obviously because I'm not wearing dark colors around it so on top I have a Mitsa they call it a Mitsa I know some people say Tuli but for Dior they call it the Mitsa and um, it's a little silk scarf that when I purchased the bag it has the um, Trois de Jouy uh, print on the back side, I don't know if you can tell, there we go, very pretty, and then um, Christian Dior written on the other side. I'm not going to undo this because I finally got it right, like I tied it on and I don't think I can replicate this again so I'm not going to undo it but I'm going to insert a photo of this uh, Mitsa scarf um, that is on the website, currently it is sold out, I am looking for another one of these to take around the handle and I know some people were able to tie one going around and then tying a little bow but I wasn't able to do that and I just kind of left it on as like a, a big scarf. Um, the Mitsas or the scarves are there to protect the handles because of oils from your skin but I am very careful and when I do carry the bag I carry with the strap on top. Speaking of the strap, what I do is I place the strap on the outside of the handle right so that way when you carry it the, the the two top handles stay put they stay still and they don't flop over so that's how I can keep the shape of the bag upright like this so it's just about the strap placement so far for wear and tear what I noticed just recently because I was um, exploring uh, putting on another Mitsa scarf on the handles was um, you see how you put the shoulder strap right so I've got the shoulder strap and I've got like the um, initials on there okay um, you put one uh, hook on the opposite handle sorry you, you put them on opposite grommets right so you put one on like one side and then you put one on the back handle on the other side so where I have that handle attached if you can see um, and I'll probably insert like a close-up shot as well on here and then on here where the strap sort of swings about against that handle because I put the strap on the front of the handle in order to keep the handles up and that's what Dior has also suggested that's how they put it on for me um, it rubs against that and um, I don't know if that's just residue or whatnot or if that color actually rubbed off but there's like a slight black mark. Um, of course it's gonna bother me because I am OCD about my bag, but um, it's if it's inevitable, like I can't really can't really stop that unless I put like a meets on both handles. And I don't know if I like the look of having both covered. I don't know, but um, the nice thing about Dior is what they say, I haven't done this yet, but what they say is if anything happens to the lambskin. Um, color wise they can retouch it or re dye it if it needs to be so I mean I'll ask about it and I'll update you guys later and what they say but um, it's not something that you know is so noticeable but if I really like look my, at my bag and stick my nose in there <laughs> that's what I'm gonna notice um, I don't know if I'll carry it any different to prevent that from happening because I like how I have the strap on top so I don't, I don't know how I can prevent that from happening. So it's only on the opposing sides. It's only on the opposing sides. It's not on here and it's not on here either. So that's where it's coming from. So that's something that you have to be mindful of. So wear and tear are scratches on the lettering of the charm. 
and scratches on um, or scuffs on the handle if you have the strap attached. So when it came to choosing the initials um, or the little letters, I wasn't sure what to get because my name has seven letters in it. So um, I really don't know what to get and um, I haven't changed my last name yet. So that's something else I have to get going on. I didn't put my um, first name and last name as my initials. So uh, I was thinking of getting Dior put onto it, like a D-I-O-R or a D-I and then a heart and an R. But I just seemed like it felt like it would be too logo-y and it's already quite redundant with the Dior charm. And I didn't really, I don't really need to spell out that this is Dior, long story short. Um, I was going to get my husband's name and he was very happy about that because he has four letters in his name so I would have had to buy an extra charm. Um, and I was going to do that but then my sales associate had uh, thought of a really cute idea, kind of corny because we're not corny like that, we're not that couple but she put uh, the initial of his first name with a heart and then my um, initial for my first name. So it's kind of cute. Um, I think it's sweet. I might, you know, I could change it around or another bag I can get other letters. So, um, but that was a really sweet idea and I thought that was really cute and he was very happy about it. That, I guess that kind of justified my purchase for the bag. <laughs> so you do have to play Tetris with this bag. Um, it's not as flexible. You do have to keep it really organized on the inside and then place things in. So, um, it, it can, that's the only con with this bag is that because it's so structured, you do have to really mindfully place all your items in. Uh, if you just throw things in, then you do need a bit of time to take everything out and then, you know, get access to the item that you need, which could be like your card holder or your keys. So um, that's the only con about this bag. So I don't really like to overload this bag. I usually like to carry like um, just the essentials because um, the size is small. If you want to go bigger, then you'd want to get the medium size. But um, the rest of the things, like I keep like my makeup bag if I need to, I'll put it in like my work bag. But um, this has just got like my wallet, keys, um, cash, uh, change, some makeup, um, what else? Gum, sunglasses, things like that that I'm gonna have to reach for, you know, if I'm out. But other things that I need to carry with me, I usually carry in like a bigger tote that I keep in the car. So my decision to buy this bag, it was really um, well thought out. I always wanted to get a Lady Dior. At first, when I was younger, my style was different. I liked a lot of um, slouchier, more casual bags. And then as I started to get older, I started to prefer more structured bags. And I did want to get a classic item from Dior. So I was looking into getting a Lady Dior. Um, but at the time, the sizing was not something that I really uh, was a fan of. So they came out with the mini version, you know, with the chain strap that I really liked, but it was just too small. And I was attracted to the chain strap because I thought it was very pretty. Um, it's like jewelry, uh, but it didn't come on the larger sizes. Also, the mini size had this flap closure, right? So that it's easier to get into the bag. The larger sizes, so the um, medium and the large that were available at the time had like that zipper opening that was in the middle. And that was something that really deterred me from the bag because I couldn't really get into it. It's already a very structured, boxy bag. It's like a basket, really, and there's really not a whole lot of flexibility. Um, so for me to slot things in, it just seemed impossible with that zipper. When they came out with the um, small size, um, they came out with it in the My Lady Dior. So the My Lady Dior had the chunky strap and it had these badges that you have buttons um, that you put onto it. I wasn't a fan of the buttons. I thought it looked kind of tacky, like I didn't really like it. Um, and I didn't feel like it went with the vibe of the bag, so that really put me off. But I liked the size of the small. So I had asked Dior um, when I was in the... We didn't have a, a flagship at the time. Uh, we did have a concession at Holt Renfrew, which is our department store here in Canada. Um, now we've got other department stores from the States, but Holt Renfrew is kind of like the, the main one that was there from the beginning. And the lady at Dior was talking to me and she said yes, you know, and I was comparing the two sizes. Um, and I'd asked, well, can I get the same uh, strap for the mini to go on my on the small if I wanted to do that and she said sadly we can't do that 
Um, when I was in Las Vegas, uh, they have a lot of designer boutiques there and I had asked there and they said, yes, we can actually order you a strap. So I was like, okay. But I didn't want to purchase it in Las Vegas because it ends up being more expensive than be purchasing it in, in Canada just because of the exchange rate and then the tax, right? So, um, and then also colors too. Color uh, for Lady Dior, um, I always wanted to get a nude color. And the nudes that they had at the time were too light, they were too yellow, um, or they would be pinky but with like a sheen to it and it was just not something I was a fan of. I did see two nude colors that I was this close to purchasing in Las Vegas but they were too dark um, and not quite perfect. So, and that was when they had the My ABC Lady, sorry, the, that's when they had the My Lady Dior with the badges. So a lot of things that really deterred me, it just wasn't perfect for me lesson to learn is that if there's a specific style from a designer house don't settle for something just because it's available they will most likely come out with what you want in the near future so just wait around and wait around for the style that you want don't just settle for what they have and that's happened to me on three occasions uh, twice with Dior and once with Chanel and I was so glad that I waited uh, for that specific style of item to come out and the color that I wanted. And I didn't just cave for something that was there, but I wasn't 100% sure about. Because you're dropping quite a bit of money on these things, so you, you want to make sure it's perfect for you. When this color came out, I did not see it in person. I saw it on the website, um, and on the website it looks a tad darker. I don't even think that they call it fard on the website, but I'm just going to make sure if that's the same bag, but it always looked darker. And at the uh, Dior boutiques uh, that we started to have open in Toronto, we didn't have the flagship then. Uh, last year we didn't have it yet. The flagship opened in I think fall of last year, but this particular bag and color and style came out in the spring of 2019. Um, I had asked at Dior at Saks uh, Fifth Avenue as well as at both Holt Renfrew locations and they did not have this color. It was um, sold out or a special order, you know, or sorry, not special order, you could be put on a wait list. Um, but they were able to show me what the color sort of looked like on like a matte uh, grained Dior saddle. So I kind of had an idea of what it was like. But anyway, um, I was searching for this bag and I really wanted it. I wasn't sure about the straps still, but I was okay with having the um, charms and initials because I thought it looked a little bit more classic with the coloring of the bag. So I had called the 1-800 number for Dior. So I had asked them, I said, I'm looking for this bag and can you let me know when it becomes available? And then they did. So I was able to purchase this bag. Um, price wise, I'll insert here um, how much I paid Canadian um, at the time. So since then, there have been two price increases. So one since I bought it and then one recently in July. And now this bag is a whopping $5,800 Canadian. Um, don't forget tax. So tax, uh, if you're from North America in the States or in Canada, a lot of our, a lot of our um, items do not include tax. Tax is always on top. So people from Europe um, and then from Australia, uh, you know, one of our friends that was visiting, it just boggled her mind that now we have to add this additional tax. So depending on what city you're from, um, there's a percentage. So here in Ontario, our tax is 13%. So it's quite hefty. 5,800 times 1.13. So this is like $65.54 for this bag and um, that's quite a bit, that's quite a bit. I am, I did have a mini on my wish list, um, that's also gone up quite a bit too, um, but when I was looking for the mini I also would have bought like a seasonal variation, like a special edition, either in like a croc, maybe a croc, I don't know, or a patent leather or something embellished. Um, same goes for like the medium but in the mini because the mini size is so small and it's dainty and it's very formal uh, looking so I will most likely use it as like an evening bag um, so for that I want to get something special so it probably would not have been in the the regular price for their I guess base model it would have been more expensive 
Um, the medium size is something that I do have on my list as well. I do love it in the black, but I don't need another black bag. So I am looking for something that's embroidered or something special um, for a day-to-day -day use because it is a little bit bigger. And also in the seasonal um, variations for the medium size, you get this flap, the foldable flap, um, and not the zipper. So that's why I'm looking for a seasonal piece. Um, the strap was something that I had mixed feelings about when I had bought this bag. Um, again, I was told that um, you could order the strap uh, with the leather tab, and um, but for some reason it just wasn't available. They did have the mini in this color at the time that I bought it, and I was like, maybe I should get the mini. But then I thought about it and I said, no, I want something with a little bit more room and it's okay, I can always get a, another strap to go with this. But I really started to love this strap. It is so flexible, it's so soft, it's so comfortable to wear crossbody or on your, on your shoulder. Um, so I have no regrets with this strap. When I was in Las Vegas um, in, what was it, August last year, um, one of the sales associates, they, they could actually sell me a chain without the leather tab um, that's very similar to the mini. So we tried it on with this bag and she was absolutely right. Putting on a slim chain with this size of bag, it looks weird. So when I saw that, I said, no, you know what? The design is there for a reason. I trust the design house for putting this strap on there. They know what the aesthetics are going to be so um, I'm really comfortable with this bag. I will never sell this bag. I love this bag to death. Um, it is one of my favorite purchases. I highly recommend it in this color, in this size. Um, it is just a joy to use. I get so many compliments on this um, bag every time I wear it. It goes with so many items. It can also go with black but um, given our climate, um, well, black I mostly wear in like the colder months, and given the way our climate is with the snow, and then we get rain, and um, I don't want to carry this bag at that time. If you live in a climate where it tends to be really warm and sunny, um, it's great. If your winters are like crisp, sunny, but cold, this will also be beautiful. Unfortunately for our weather, when it does get cooler, it's not as sunny. It does get kind of dreary. We do have a lot of moisture in the air. We can get rain and snow, so this is not going to be the most weatherproof bag. But if you live in that sort of climate, this is something you can wear year-round because it's so neutral. Okay guys, so that is it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section down below. Uh, if you like to see more of these types of videos, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification button to get alerted every time I upload a new video. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. The growth ha for this channel has been something that is beyond my expectations. I know I'm still in the baby steps, but really, like, I people are actually watching, and I'm, I'm very flattered <laughs> about that. So thank you so much for your support and your kind words, and that just keeps me motivated to film more videos. I'm so, so thankful for that. Anyway, I will see you in my next video. Bye.